Welcome to Reseller News, from e-commerce to reselling, bringing you the latest news and updates. My name is Rich Bassini. Today is October 21st, 2018. I just want to start off by saying thank you to all the new subscribers who recently subscribed to me. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you get a takeaway from the information I put out. And without further ado, let's get right to it. I'm going to bump out over here and go into the screen here. For those who are new, <clears throat> and if you're not too familiar with, uh, you know, the eBay community, whether some some of you may and some may not, uh, I never really got too much into it until I started reading from other uh, sellers and stuff like that. And um, it's very interested, in, interesting to read what other people are voicing their concerns and issues about. And the way you're going to find that out is by going to the uh, eBay community. <clears throat> Excuse me if I'm a little hoarse, folks. I... Um, <laughs> I think I'm coming down with one of these uh, coughs or whatever, but I'll, I'll make it through. <laughs> it goes on to say over here in the latest discussions, um, these are the things that people are talking about. You could see over here the new the new dates, which is today, 10-21-2018. And I'm not going to read these. I'm not going to open them up because we'll be here for quite some time. I want to just expand on some other topics fairly quick, hopefully. And you can see people are voicing their concerns about shipping supplies. Here's another one. Is anyone else not receiving safe search emails? eBay changing the best offer on listings. Paid for 16, uh, paid item, paid for item 16 days ago. Seller not responding and item not shipped. Seller fees. Account suspended. Cannot check the status. Did not receive, <clears throat> did not receive the uh, payment for shipping costs. Problems with the seller. Uh, what happened to eBay's quarterly sell allowance? Why should buyers provide a credit to eBay? Don't they have enough money? <laughs> right? And you can, all, you can read this here, folks. There's, they got load, you can load more discussions up here. Um, you can see this is from member to member support. And this all, all of these that I read just now came out today. And uh, I'm sure when you refresh the screen, you're going to even get more and more coming up. But for those who are not familiar with it, you might want to check out the eBay community uh, and see what other people are voicing their concerns and issues about. You could just go there by going to uh, HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash <clears throat> community.ebay.com. I highly recommend you check that out. Another one, if you want to check out, get status updates on what's going on with eBay, you go to this well, another site I always talk about in my uh, other reseller news. Uh, the downdetector.com when you go there to when you first sign up in there you go to that window it's going to bring you to a whole array of the companies you're going to look for you're going to search for ebay you're going to click it on and it's going to bring you to this page here um now as i always say in my other videos don't look at the information up here because and get turned off because you might look at it and say oh this is old and go off it you click off it no this this tier the most reported problems they change on a daily basis okay uh, this was at 90% at one time. It went down to 61% on website issues. Logon issues were 19%. Check out 19%. These numbers will change on a daily basis. Okay. Now, if you want to read old stuff, well, all the stuff that happened like in September, August, or June, you could click these on and you could read about that there. If you're going to respond on here, they want you to sign up. So over here, I got my name Richard over here. That's the only way you're going to be able to join the discussion. If you don't sign up, you won't be able to leave it. This and how I know this is all new stuff. You just go by the dates. I'm not going to read all this stuff here, folks, but I just want to show you how to decipher what's new. And you know, because you might think, well, this might be stuff that's happened three or four months ago. Uh, no, it, it gets over here. It says three hours, two hours, two hours ago. This is 19 hours ago. Yes, this is two hours ago. And you'll see uh, that this is newer stuff here. Okay, this is not stuff that was three months old, four months old. Like I said, if you want to read the older stuff, you could just click this on here, the problems at eBay or whatever, and you could check it out for these dates, okay? Check it out. If you get a chance, you go to Down Detector. The URL is downdetector.com, okay? So I'm going to go to, um, let's see what this one here is, the Resell Weekend. I think I was doing something on here in YouTube. Okay, I think I was just testing something out. Here. Yeah, yep, yeah, I was just testing something out. <laughs> okay, yeah, every now and then I like to check out my videos and see, you know, how they're looking on YouTube and stuff like that, and uh, that that looks okay. Um, this one here is from um, what do you call it? This is from Skip McGrath. 
he's an Amazon seller and he he gives good advice he's been on eBay radio a couple of times I've listened to him I subscribe to his uh, newsletter um, he's very informative he's been around for quite some time uh, he gives a little insight of you, a little story about himself. Uh, he goes, oh, he had to say, my wife and I started selling eBay back in 1999. That's when I started. We started making money and never looked back until recently. <clears throat> now, in this one here, it says eBay sells. Is it time to try Amazon? But the next day, he goes on to say, um, let's see, this is the same one. Okay, let me clear out of this one here because I think I opened it up twice. <laughs> the next day, he goes on the 21st. Uh, October 21st is it time to break up Amazon and I, I have to <laughs> I know it sounds kind of funny you say wait this is the same guy talking about that yeah it is it's Skip from Grab. Um he feels I guess the same way as a lot of us feel that there has been a lot of issues going on with eBay you know with the sales with the the new payment system going on and everything else that that goes with it uh, I think he feels like that. I think at one point, I think there was another uh, video I did where he said that he will no longer be selling on eBay. At least that's the way I understand it anyway. And that he's going to let his stuff run off it. And I think once it runs off, that's it, you know. Um, <clears throat> but uh, that's the way I understand it. I don't know. I could be wrong. Uh, or he could. He might have changed his mind. But um, it goes over here to say, uh, if you have followed my newsletter... Then you know I think eBay has become the most poorly managed e-commerce companies in the marketplace. About 10 years ago, 2006, we added Amazon to our sales uh, sales channel. Frankly, we did not we did not do very well at first. We found it <clears throat> it took a while to get a hang of Amazon, and since there was still shipping goods individual to individual customers, there was no big advantage. The Amazon introduced FBA fulfillment by Amazon. Under FBA, we shipped our goods to Amazon and they handled the fulfillment and customer service. This was a boon. I guess it's supposed to be boom. All right. This was a boon for us as we added products to our FBA uh, inventory. We saw our sales steadily increase. Yes, it made. <clears throat> we made a little less uh, per product selling on Amazon FBA versus selling on eBay. But the dramatically increased uh, volume made up for it. Uh, it says soon we'll be selling many we'll be selling as many eight to ten items on Amazon as we were on eBay. Even with some somewhat lower margins, we're still making more total dollars uh, overall. And then it goes on to say shortly after I wrote to Am I wrote about uh, wrote eBay to Amazon. Now I want to be honest with you, it has been a, a few years since I wrote about eBay to Amazon, and but I keep you up to date in two ways. If something changes, I'll blog it. A blog about it, and then the other one is when you buy a, when you buy a book and get a ton of special reports. I have written to update the book and to add these all the time. So you know he's telling you that he's uh, he's pretty much got off of eBay. He's not too happy with him. You can see reading in here. Uh, he's really good though. I, I really recommend you uh, subscribe to his newsletter if you want to be updated on things. Uh, I'm going to give you his uh, URL to get to him. You know, get in contact, whatever. Uh, it's blog dot skip mcgrath one word dot com and you can read his story now this is the one where he's saying is it time to try amazon that came out october 20th 2018 you can see right here okay now the next one i'm going to bump out so i don't get confused the other one he wrote which was today and it says the time to break up amazon now i want to expand a little on that myself because i'll be honest with you um, I get this magazine coming here. Let me just bump out of here really quick. Um, I got my glasses on because I want to read this here. You know, I think I think as time goes on, folks, I think the future is going to be. I I could be wrong. Uh, I'm just I'm just as my own personal take. I'm just voicing my opinion. Um, I get this magazine, and it's called the um, Internet Retailer. Just trying to get that label off of here. <laughs> That doesn't really matter, but yeah, it's got my address on it. <laughs> but anyway, um, the magazine is the, I got to keep it close to my chest because if you don't, it blends in with the background. It gets translucent. You might even have a glare. It's called the Internet Retailer. Okay. The other topic is Supreme Court oh, um, overturned Quill. Now what? That's another going to be another issue going on. I'm not going to expand too much on that, but because that's going to be, I think, its own video on it in itself. But anyway, um, so I'm looking through this here, 
and I'm looking through the pages, like as I'm going through the pages here, and um, I found it kind of interesting that, you know, it usually gives you a little breakdown, a little summary of what each topic is going to be about. And one of the topics was, can Amazon conquer home goods? <laughs> now, it says Amazon already leads in the category online, but it faces strong competition from uh, the like of House, Wayfair, and others. Now, look. I, I mean, I understand what he's saying. He's trying to break up, wake up, break away from Amazon or whatever. But, you know, it says, can Amazon conquer home goods? I don't know. You think Amazon's going to be a one shop for all? Because that's what it looks like it's going to be here. I mean, it looks like this guy is going to compete and buy everything and everything for everything and anything to get this online dominance, I mean, in, in the retail sector. And it's really... You know, if you don't have competition and you got to go to that one person, I'm not saying a monopoly, but but you got to deal with that one person, you know, at least less competition out there. What do you really got? I mean, how can you really, you know, how can it be beneficial to you? That's the whole idea of, I, that's what I like about competition because, you know, I, I think I said in one of my other videos, I personally like to, I prefer to shop at Walmart versus Target. Why? I just like Walmart's prices better, okay? Uh, to me, I think I said it once before, Target was more like an upscale. It's a little upscale than Walmart. And I'm not saying it in a bad way. So if there's any Walmart employees or managers or whoever watching it, <clears throat> I'm not saying it in, in a derogative way. I'm just trying to bring a point out. If you go look at a, if you look at a Target versus a Walmart, Target is more like, kind of like puts you like in a Macy's type of store, like that type of category. And I'm not saying high-end clothing. I'm talking about the decor. Okay, I'm talking at the core of it. Uh, as opposed to Walmart, it's kind of like, you know, your basic department store. I mean, uh, you know, a retailer. You go in there and, you know, you got your frozen foods and stuff like that. It's not like, like well, again, uh, you know, Macy's doesn't sell frozen vegetables and, you know, produce and all that stuff. But when I'm talking about the decor, if you look at the two, you know what I'm talking about. It's got a little different decor in there. At least the one by me does. Um, but the point I'm trying to get across is, when you have competition and you have choices, it makes it a, you know, a little better. Like in other words, you because you know, some may be cheaper than others. You may get better discounted prices. Now, I don't know. I mean, to me, uh, it seems to me that Amazon wants to touch bases on everything. They want to like get in the game and you know play all fields, play all the all the all the games, all the stops, and you know. I understand the company's probably got the revenue to do it. You know, they're a big, big in, in numbers as far as revenue-wise, no doubt. But, you know, as I said once before, you know, leave a little meat on the bone for other people, you know, because there are other companies out there that are struggling right now. And I think as time goes on, retailers, you know, the online people too, they're going to feel it. You know, and that's the other thing I wanted to touch, talk bases, you know, touch bases on. Um... In regards to uh, with the online internet tax, that's going to be another problem. I th I think I could be wrong, but I think that's going to be a problem. I don't want to expand too much on these topics, but I think you know when that gets fully into swing, uh, which I understand people are supposed to be. I think there are some states right now where they're already collecting taxes. But here's the thing: um, I don't think it's it you know it's something really new, and I'll say why, I'll tell you why. Because since I got into this business, fully full-time business with this eBay uh, selling, um, I did it back in June of 2016 when I lost my job. I got laid off. And um, I've been collecting New York State sales tax right from the get-go for as far as that part, as soon as I started into it. So it, it, that's always been around. But this thing here where it says over here... Um, you know about the uh you know overturned quill you know the court the supreme court overturned will now what you know and that's another topic to get involved with to expand on i don't want to get too much into it like i said that's something i would like to do just a separate video on it and just talk expand about that stuff i, I don't know how that's going to play out folks i'll be honest with you uh small time sellers like myself it, you know if I, it's going to get to a point where it becomes so complicated i don't know if i'll be <laughs> on how much longer i'll be on this here to be honest with you um because, you know, simple. I like simplifying things. And that's what I'm saying. Like, even, for example, 
like I said once before, uh, if they really wanted to make this streamlined and, and, you know, really help, I understand, you know, companies want to collect sales tax. I understand. I'm not saying, you know, that you people say, well, how would you feel? You know, you're in a, you're, you live in a state and, you know, people are, you know, buying, you're selling the same merchants, but people are getting online and paying that sales tax. How would you feel? I, it, it would probably bother me too. But here's the thing. This is what I'm saying, though, in regards to that. Like I said it once before, and I'll say it again. I stand by what I say. What I think, if they really want to simplify it, is whether, according to this article that's written in the Internet Retailer, whether you have a nexus of business or a nexus in that state, they still want you to collect the sales tax. Okay? They still want that. But here's the thing. I'm all in favor of paying taxes. Okay? I live in New York. Very simple. It's very simple. It doesn't have to be so complicated. I live in New York. I collect all the sales tax from the New York residents. Okay? I take that money. I put it aside. Keep it in my business account, whatever. Tax time comes around. You write the New York State Department of Taxation. Here's a check. This is the amount of sales I made from it. Bingo. And be done with it. But to do it the way they want to do it, where if you sell in California, in this state, that state, whatever. Now, I don't know if eBay is going to collect the money on that, you know, collect that. And then, like they said, I thought I heard them say something, you know, read something like that, where they're going to take care of the uh, part they're collecting the money. I think I think eBay will set it up that. It depends. I don't know. I thought I read something like that. And you're going to be responsible for sending it off, which makes sense. I mean, you can't expect eBay to do it. If you're not going to say, oh, I'll speak on behalf of R.J. Passini or I'll speak on behalf of John Doe, whatever. You know, people are going to, you know, you, that's your responsibility. I have no problem with that as far as that part goes. But the other thing is I think it's going to be more complicated as time goes on because you're going to get people that may be shied away from it, especially with this new company, this Aiden, the new payment processing uh, company. I don't know if there's people complain. I think there were people complaining about it already. Okay, the people that opted in. Okay, I don't recall opting in because I still have my listings that still have PayPal on them. I'd rather keep PayPal. But, um, you know, it's going to be a problem. But in getting back with Amazon, I think this is what Skip McGrath was talking about. Is it time to break away or Amazon to break up, whatever? Um, I, I think what's going to happen is as time goes on, more and more companies fold or they go out of business, whatever. Amazon's going to be there to pick up the pieces. Okay? Look, they sell everything and anything anyway. Now, Wayfair is a big company. That's an online company too, I believe, right? Um, what's he going to do? He's going to buy them. Is he going to buy the other company? This one here, House. What's he going to do? I mean, I mean, I. If we're going to have one global company to do business with, that ought to be pretty interesting. But at the same time, if it's going to be a lot of you know stuff like that, I think I'd rather just go to my local uh, regular department store and just make my purchases in person. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know how it's going to go. I, I really don't know how that's going to work out. But that's a whole other topic. Let me bump back in here again and finish up with that story because I just want to show you something else on there and then I want to close this video out. Okay, so he writes over here, is it time to break up Amazon? All right, and he put this out today. It says, the main advantage of breaking up companies is twofold. One, you create more value for each of the segments of, uh, because they can grow faster. Customers are less confused. Let's, let, let's look at some of, the <clears throat> some of the parts of Amazon and what, we, uh, what would make sense to separate and why amazon web services aws is a cloud is the cloud computing segment of amazon aws is a comp comprehensive evolving uh cloud computing platform provided by amazon aws is in a mix of several businesses infrastructure as, sev as service platform as a service prepackaged software as a service it um <clears throat> it is now a huge business just like ebay selling paypal uh, maybe it's time to unlock in the billion, lock, unlock the billion in dollars uh, of value of value selling AWS would bring. AWS now has over 500,000 servers around the world, and although uh, Amazon will not re, uh, release exact figures, several Wall Street analysts estimate that the AWS alone is worth over 22 billion dollars. Amazon book selling business. Amazon got its first start with books. Uh, but of course, now sells thousands of different products, and Amazon now uh, lists over three million books on uh, books titles on its site. 
and annual book sales, including Kindle, and probably in excess of $5 billion, is easy, uh, easily a large enough to bi uh, business to stand on its own. And then it's got the other one, Amazon Private Label. Amazon has its own private label business for, for several years now. Uh, several tiers. Oh, I think he, made, he meant to say several years. That's okay. <laughs> we all we all had those little days. Uh, several years now. Um, products include fine jewelry, fine uh, fine wait include jewelry, fine and fashion, sporting goods, clothing, fashion accessories, and food. And new categories are being added all the time. It's possible to say with new products, uh, which new products Amazon will be adding to their IPL uh, to their PL collection, but there will be more to come. Here are just a few of the uh, current Amazon PL brands. List of Amazon's private label brands. Arabella, lingerie, button down, men's dress shirts, Amazon basics, fashion accessories, Amazon essentials, jewelry and casual clothing, coastal blue, women's swimwear, Ella Moon, global women's wear, uh, fine fashion basics, Franklin and Freeman, men's shoes, Franklin tailored men's suits. And it goes on and on a little about this. Say, uh, look, if you guys want to read the rest of this story, I'm not going to get too much into it. Um, the you, I gave you the URL. It's the same one, but I'll repeat it one more time. It's blog.skipmcgrathoneword.com. Okay, so you can check that out. I'm going to bump out of here. And this one here, I wanted to go and just share this with you really quick. Uh, this one here is frugalforless.com. I like it. Uh, this is the one I go to. Uh, you, you could you know, get some pretty good ideas from them. It says over you how to sell everything you own for an, an, uh, an A to Z guide. This came out yesterday, October 20, 2018. Take it off and make money, psychology of money, and so on and so forth. Um, then it goes on. It gives you like here what you could sell. Aluminum cans, of course, in states with bottle bills. They tell you where you can get that. You usually get five cents. Uh, appliances, you go to Greg's list. All right. Aquariums. Uh, whoops, where is it here? Aquariums. Uh, you can sell aquariums-related equipment at aquabid.com, which I never knew about them. Uh, to avoid shipping hassles, just sell the stuff through Craigslist. Then you got back, uh, again, uh, backpacking equipment. It recommends go to Craigslist. Uh, batteries. This is another one like uh, Rockaway Recycling. I think that's another site you can go to. Then you got bikes, bicycles. Go to Craigslist. Books, uh, Book Scouter, I guess is another one. These are all hype, active hyperlinks, by the way. And then boxes, boxsmart.net, boxcycle.com. Calendars, cameras, same thing, Craigslist. Cell phones, swap account, gazelles, another one if you want to sell your phones. Uh, let me move this down a little more. Clothes, Play-Doh's Closet, or Buffalo Exchange. Coin collections, cointrackers.com. Then I got a coin price guide over here. Comic books, get cash paid for, uh, get pet, get pet, whoops, get cash for comics.com. Sell comic books to us, or it's us.us, and uh, newcadia.com. Uh, Here's computers, Craigslist, how to scrap a computer. You can read it. All, I, all active hyperlinks. But um, it's a good site. If you've never been there or you're not familiar with them, uh, I like them. I like Frugal for Less. Uh, it's pretty good, especially if I'm, I'm, I consider myself a frugal entrepreneur anyway. But uh, if you might want to check this out, though, and the URL is www.frugalforless.com. And uh, with that, I'm just going to close out this here, folks. I'm trying to keep this short and sweet. And I just want to say, you know, with another week ending here, um, tomorrow's the 22nd, another week gone by, <laughs> and I think I had one little sale this week. One little teeny sale I had. I'm surprised I even got it. I mean, when I was sitting here doing research and stuff like that on the computer, I heard the cha-ching. I said, is my hearing things? I said, I haven't heard that sound in such a long time. <laughs> I said, getting to a point where I don't know what it is anymore, right? Well, I mean, I'm just saying that facetiously. But, um, no, I mean, it was it, it was music to my ears, but it was so small to sale. But they are getting, you know, they are getting views. They are getting watches and look at, you know, and views. But the thing is, folks, people are just tightening up on their money. They're, they're, they're not buying and I said it once before in my uh, other uh, retail, you know, what retail, my other reseller news, that um, I think with everything going on with the midterms, I think there's a lot of stuff that's distracting people to get into this. I, I, and I said it once before, and I'll say it again. I myself 
get caught up in that stuff. And, and you know, it's kind of sad. But, you know, sometimes I play it in the background or if I'm doing my, 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 my reselling news, I try to keep that laptop off because sometimes I have the laptop right next to me. And what I do is I work on the big one, which I'm working on. This is my main laptop, uh, the desktop that is. And this is where I do all my video editing. This is where I do all my work on stuff on this one because it's got a bigger screen. So the laptop is good, but I'll keep that to the side. And sometimes I'll keep it in a silent mode. I glance over now and then and see what new things came up. Uh, if there's any news flashes, whatever, and uh, sometimes it distracts me, and I'll stop what I'm doing, you know, and I'll go over there and check it. I was like, oh, let's see what's, what are they talking about now, you know. So I think there is a lot of distraction here, but I think there's a lot of it at side of a lot of distraction. I think there are a lot of people that are focused on what is actually going on. Now remember, with this midterm election, they say it's very important. Okay, so this they say it's probably going to be one of the most important times of the year to vote whatever uh you know as far as like the midterms uh i guess because i don't like to discuss politics but you know you hear the, you hear all these stories you know depending on who gets in office or whatever it will make a difference in our grandchildren's lives our children's lives and so on and so forth so i don't know i'm not going to expand on that i'm not going to get into it i don't like i said on this channel i don't discuss religion and politics although it comes up you know, this is a politic kind of uh, conversation I'm having here with you guys. But, you know, I, no, I'm just trying to bring a point how it interacts with, you know, what I think, how it affects e-commerce, which is what we all are. You know, we're all in the e-commerce business, and I believe it affects us. Uh, because people, if they don't feel, you know, David said, even the expression consumer confidence is down or whatever, or, you know, if people don't feel comfortable spending, you know, it, it could affect, why not, why not affect this here? Uh, give me an example. Let's say I wanted to, I love Sony products. Now, this is the camera I use to take all my pictures. Okay, this, this camera right here. All right, I got to keep it close because, like I said, it blends in there with the other thing. Um, back in the day, this is only a three pixel, a three megapixel. Let me just make sure here. It's a 3.3 .3 megapixel. It's a Sony CyberShot. Okay, it's got the MPEG in it, but it's nothing to write home about. The, uh, the video quality is, it, it takes videos, but mm, it's okay. I love Sony products. I mean, this is a, this isn't a high-end camera. It's a digital camera. I had this repaired at one point. Uh, I had to get the um, LCD screen. One summer day, I was taking a picture outside. It was very hot and humid, and this started flickering. And when this flickers, you can't see a picture. So that kind of like ended everything. Uh, I use this for everything. This is for family. This is basically, well, like I said, the kids are old now. We take pictures with our cell phones. But I use this here strictly right now for eBay. Or we'll take pictures that, you know, to put stuff up on eBay. This is, this is my go-to camera. Back in the day, I bought this camera back in uh, 2003, I believe. And back then, this camera was over 500 bucks. Over $500 for this little camera. Okay? Solid. Made very well. Uh, and I had it for a long time. And I don't know what year it was, but eventually it was a hot summer day. I know that. The screen was getting all fuzzy and stuff. I couldn't read it. And I sent it out to, um, it went back, this camera for repairs, it went to, um, Sony has a repair shop, a well, repair place, a service center, whatever, in Lubbock, Texas, I think they call it. And it cost 150 bucks to get it repaired. And when they fix it, they clean it out. They check everything else out. They do all the diagnostics on it, I guess, is what's included in that price. So I told the guy, I said, well, suppose you can't fix it. because well, we just refund you the money back. But they fixed it. And uh, this is my go-to camera. Now, there is another camera. The reason I'm bringing this camera up into place here is because there is another camera I, want, I would like to get. It's a Sony one. It's it's another one to fix, but to fix it, but it's telephoto lens, right? It's all built in. Uh, I went to Best Buy not long ago, and I was looking at it. I was there with my brother, and I was checking it out. I said, hey, let me check out this camera, see if they still have it here. It's one I'd like to get. I forget the make and model. I know it's the make. is Sony. I forget the model. And I go, um, how much do you get that camera? How much is that camera going for? The label was on. I was on sale price. And he goes, um, 500 and change. I'm like, wow. I said, uh, he goes, well, you know, I go, I'm not, I, I just want to look. I said, I'm not interested in buying. Now, if money wasn't an issue and... I really felt good about things. 
you know, let's say I wanted to upgrade, but I wouldn't because I tell my other videos, I am a frugal person. I buy out of necessity, but let's just, I'm just using myself as an example. I do my shopping and I say to myself, okay, I go to this place, I go to that place, Best Buy, Micro Center, whatever, and I look for the same camera, see who's got, I go online and I go to eBay and I see them and I have priced those cameras on eBay cheaper than Best Buy. No doubt about it. I've seen them cheaper on eBay than Best Buy. And let's say the one I have is fine. There's no problems. It works good. It takes quite nice, nice, clear pictures. And I say, you know what? I'm thinking of upgrading. But then something on my shoulder says, hey, wait a minute. You know, with everything going on in the world, with the job market, this, that, and everything, you know, supposedly everything is good with the jobs and all that stuff there, and I, I give kudos, you know, to the president and stuff, but um, it's going to make a damn thing. If I don't feel comfortable with my job, let's say I'm working a nine-to-five job and I don't feel comfortable with it, that, there's, I, I, I'm thinking to myself, there may be a possible layoff coming up here. Am I going to want to spend money? Am I going to want to put that money aside to pay bills? And, you know, you still get people like that that think along those lines, that can hamper business. People may say, I'm not gonna buy that camera. Now, that same camera, well, not that one, the one I seen in there, the one I want that was going for over $500, I see on eBay for about three and change, 384, 394. It's a little cheaper, a little, but it's it's cheaper. So, and and, and, this, and if I'm not mistaken, the guy is selling it with uh, free shipping. Now, this is supposedly is a brand new one. Don't ask me how. Oh, but that's what I was told. You know, that's why I seen it. Um, that was that case there. But you know, and I think that's what I think that's what it's all about, folks. I think I think what's going on with the midterms coming up, plus with the new payment processing, plus with everything else that eBay's going through. Um, I'm sure they they're working probably on their online tax thing because they gotta you know modify their system to incorporate taxes now. I don't know. I guess they gotta wait. Uh, I think there was only three states. I forget. I I did one of my videos. I don't know which three they are. That right that right now they're in place. Well, the only time that's going to affect you with those three states is if you sell in there. So if you don't sell in there, then you have nothing to worry about as far as that part. You're still obligated to pay your taxes. But I'm just saying, if you're not selling nothing in those states, then you don't have to worry about it. You follow? Um, I don't know what I don't know what the outcome is going to be though. But I think with that. And like I said, again, with the uh, payment system, plus the lawsuit going on at Amazon, you know, I think eBay's got a lot. They're taking a lot in. They're taking a lot. They're putting a lot. They got a, a lot. You know, they're putting a lot on their plate, there, so to speak. So I'm not sticking up for eBay. I'm not an advocate for eBay. I like eBay. But at the same time, I think whatever they're going through, it's going through like what they call birth pains, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems like... Every time you turn around, there's always some kind of an issue with it. And I feel bad. I feel bad for the company. I really do. People may say, how can you feel bad for the company? You think they feel bad? I know. I'm just saying it because, like, how many years ago, you know, I was doing, well, I, I, I got into this two years ago, right? But I remember at least a day and a half every other day I was hearing the cha-ching, sometimes two cha-ching, sometimes three. I was like, wow, this is great. Let's keep it going. I would love to, you know, hear a lot of cha-chings all the time, you know. Uh, I just want to share this really quick. I was looking on uh, online uh, about, you know, selling, about selling, uh, how, how I, how, this is what I like about with, with, when you, how you find out things. I was selling that um, HP AC power adapt. I did, uh, I did a video. You guys might check it out if you choose to do so. And I, I had it up in the eaves. And I pulled it out, and it works. It tested and stuff like that. And what happened was, I was looking that one up online because I want to get an idea about you know the pricing. I want to make sure I'm writing the right information down, so on and so forth. So anyway, I came across <coughs> this seller who's selling the same thing. Well, similar. It's unbranded, and when you hear unbranded, China is number one for that unbranded stuff. Plain and simple. Uh, that's the way I see it anyway. So I'm looking at this guy's thing. So oh, that's interesting. Click it on. He talks a little about it, gives you the specs and all that stuff there. Unbranded. Um, he's offering free shipping. 
and I think he's charging sixteen dollars or fifteen or whatever it is. And I said I'm going to sell mine, so I I was on his listing, and you know you can say you've got what you have one to sell, you click it on. I clicked it on, and then I started doing a little research on a company. I'm not going to mention the company's name. Person's up having thirty thousand listings on his site. Now when I went to sold listings. 7,000 and change came up of sold listings. I mean, sold. This guy covers a variety of little things. The site's a little provocative if you get my drift. This guy here, I was looking at sold listings and I'm going down, I'm looking at all the 1020s, going down, down, down. A couple of pages of 1020s, like, and then he had 1219, 1218. I said, this guy is doing phenomenal. 7,000 and change listings paid. Guy's doing pretty good for himself. I don't know what he's getting the items for. I don't know what his profit margin is. But he's doing all right for himself. But the only thing is, and I mean, he had a lot going out on yesterday. Looking at the sales, I was like, holy smokes. I'm looking, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to sit there computating every single one he sold. But I was like, wow. So this guy is making buku cash. So for some of us, but he's got, according to that, he's got like 30,000 listings. Okay. Um, must be doing something right. Because I, I was clicking page after page after page. A couple pages, maybe three or four pages for October 20th, then October 19th, 18th. This guy, I didn't want to go anywhere. I said, that's it, I'm done. I said, I've seen enough. I saw seen the green prices there. It's like, wow. This guy's a heavy hitter. But, um, you know, it is what it is, folks. And uh, it's all yet to be seen. we got to see how it works out, how it plays out. But anyway, without taking too much of your time, I want to just say enjoy the rest of your weekend. I wish everybody all the good sales. You know, we all have to make sales this coming week. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't be surprised to like after November or after November 6th, after the primary is over. I think a lot of people want to see what's going on. I, I could be wrong. If I'm wrong or if you agree with me, leave a comment below. Just say, hey, Rich, I agree with you. I disagree with you, whatever. I'm just curious to see what you have to say. But I think after November 6th, I think when all the dust settles, all this rhetoric goes around and all this bickering and stuff like that, I think people have a better idea as to what's going on. Um... <laughs> The only thing, like I said, I don't really want to get into topics with, with taxes and stuff like that, with, or, uh, you know, politics. The only thing I will say, and I'm not for it or against it, I'm not going to sit there and um, explain what party I belong to, okay? But I will say this stuff. Um, and I know you might say, well, I can guess it right by what you're saying. No, I'm kind of like right in the middle, okay? I don't want to take sides. The only thing I will say is this. This is why I say it may be after it's over. From what I understand with the current president in office right now, that as long as his administration's in there and stuff like that, you know, like they said, he did something with the tax reform, whatever, and people were getting more a little a little more money in their paychecks. If the parties switch over, I'm just going by what I listen to, okay? I try to listen to both sides. I don't. I'm not a swing voter or anything like that. I just listen to what people have to say. My father used to have a saying, you listen to what people have to say and you judge for yourself. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Okay? I'm not getting into politics. I'm not going to sit telling you I'm this, I'm that, and the other thing. All I'm saying is what I hear. If the other party takes control of the House or Senate or whatever, from what I hear, I'm not a politician. I'm not a statistician. I don't know what you know exactly all the, all the dynamics behind it. From what I hear, a lot of that may come off again. In other words, my, may, may, they may retract a lot of that stuff. Okay? So if that's the case, if they do retract that and they where, where the people are not getting any more extra money in their paychecks, that they're going to be, you know, they're going to, in other words, they're going to be spending more, it's going to cost more, that may be a little dampener on things as to why sales may be stagnant. Now, you might say, well, how does that have to do, what does that have to do with eBay? You'd be surprised, folks. You'd be surprised. 
Not only is e-commerce online business hurting right now, even the retailers are hurting. Okay? You know, I went to when I was going to college for uh, retail business management, they have a thing called inventory floor taxes. And right before the tax time comes, a lot of department stores, they they need to, that's why they run all these big sales. You go to Macy's, 60% off, 75% off, whatever, you get all these big, all these prices over there. They need to get that out because that's what they call inventory floor taxes. What I guess, what's ever left over, they're going to be paying tax on that. So that's why they run all the sales right before tax time. That's why people say, oh, yeah, right after Christmas or whatever, you go there and you can get some good deals or during Christmas season, whatever. Okay? I, I'm not saying, you know, <clears throat> because I'm throwing out a little tip of information out there, it makes me, you know, a retail man, like I know everything about retailing. But I'm just trying to say, going back to you know, learning in college, what that was all about. That's why I understand it, unless things changed, <laughs> which is possibility. But, you know, uh, what I'm trying to say is it, I believe everything does have an effect, a cause and effect. Okay, that's my personal take on it. And I, I'm speaking on my own behalf. Like I said earlier with the camera, um, I would, would I love to upgrade? Um, right now, I, I'm, I'm happy with the camera I have, but if I was a person that wasn't frugal, if I wasn't a frugal person, very conservative, yeah, I would like to upgrade to get that camera, but I'm not gonna spend another $500 for it. What do I do with this one? People say, well, you can sell it. You know what I can get for that camera? Honestly, even though I paid 500 bucks for it, I seen them going for so much, so cheap on eBay for 45 dollars, 50 dollars, whatever. For something I paid 500 bucks for, I'm not going to spend that kind of money, and it works fine, right? Uh, and, and and put myself in debt for another 500 dollar camera when I have that one to work. What am I? And what am I? If I sell it, we say, yeah, you get 50 bucks for it or whatever it is. It's better than nothing. No, I'd rather just keep the camera and sell it for 50 bucks. It's a 500 dollar camera. Why am I going to want to sell for 50 bucks for? You know, but it, I, I believe what goes on in the economy, what's going on with the, with the politics and all that stuff there. I think I do believe that it does have a, an effect on eBay, on, on online sales. Now, you might say, yeah, I disagree. I agree to disagree with you. That's fine. We're all entitled to opinions. But I do believe that that could be a problem. I think that's part of it. Outside of everything else that eBay is going through. I think they got I think there's too many people that got their hands in a cookie jar. And I think that's what that's what's causing a problem here. So you got more, you know, you got all these different things coming up. Like I said, you got the payment. They got they're working on that payment processing uh, uh, feature. Okay, we don't know how that's going to go. You know, uh, then you like I said, then you got the uh, the other thing there with the um, with the lawsuit going on, right? And then what are the other glitches they're experiencing? So they got a lot. They got a lot in their plate. You know, they got a lot of things going on. So, uh, and then, like I said, with the economy going on, and the online taxes is another thing. They're working on that. So, you know, it, it's, like a, it's probably like a, a mass ball of confusion over there at eBay, at the corporate headquarters. I mean, those IT developers, software engineers, systems engineers, whatever, they got to, you know, when things like this happen, all these changes, that, that costs a lot of money for the R&D, research and development, you know what I'm saying? You got, you got people got to do all this research and... You know, it costs money to, when you're upgrading and updating software. And then, plus, if they buy you from another company, I know when I was IT, when we bought software, uh, we came out with a, uh, some kind of software for our, for our data center that would automatically respond to prompts that came up. Uh, that software wasn't cheap. It was thousands and thousands of dollars for that software and was licensed. So you only had that license only guaranteed so many systems you could use it on. So if you got a big conglomerate and you got all these IT developers working on it, these software engineers working on these products, I mean on this on that software, you know, you got so many licenses for those developers. And if you got yeah, you know, I'm saying if you got a lot and you gotta buy all of that software, all those licenses, that adds up too. You know, you gotta skim that off your profits too. Because some of the software could be expensive. I mean, I know we used to pay thousands of dollars for software when we did a software update, when we when we purchased software updates. <clears throat> but um, let's see how it plays out, folks. I I, I don't know. What we got another another two weeks? I thought well, no, no, but no, no, week and a half. Tomorrow's the twenty second. What? It's the it ends on the thirty first, and then it protracts. Then that, like I said, another week and three days, or another week and a half, whatever, and then we'll see what happens in November. Maybe after maybe after November sixth. 
Maybe everything will pick up. Maybe we'll start hearing the cha-chings or whatever. Who knows? Maybe we'll go boom or bust. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be very interesting, folks. That's all I could say. It's going to be a very interesting time. This is going to be very interesting. I like to... I wish I had a crystal ball I could look and tell you exactly what's going to happen, but it's going to be interesting. You do your own research. Read the news if you got time uh, and follow up and read in between the lines, so to speak. You might get an idea, you know, what's going, what's really going on out there. A lot of crazy things, man, going on out there. A lot of crazy stuff. Really is crazy. I mean, crazy things going on. But anyway, I'm going to let you guys go. I wish you all the best, as I said again. And to those who subscribe to my channel, thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated. I hope you keep coming back for more. I hope you get a takeaway from it. You know, if somebody gets a takeaway from this information I put out, if you, it's up to you if you want. Drop a comment. Just say, Rich, you know, I like the information. I like what you're doing with your channel. You, you're, you know, you're straight up forward. I don't sugarcoat anything either, folks, to tell you the truth. I, I, I tell it like it is. I mean, when I express myself to you, there's nobody coax me or poking me and saying, oh, this is what you got to say, this is what you don't say. I tell it like it is. I don't sidestep it, okay? It's like that saying that you walk the walk, you talk the talk, right? I mean, you know, be upfront with yourself. You know, I, that's who I am. I tell it like it is. I don't, I don't sugarcoat anything. And, you know, like I said again, many times over, if I'm doing good, if I'm doing good with sales or whatever, I'm going to tell you guys, well, I did pretty good. I had a good week. I'm not going to get into details and tell you, well, I made, uh, you know, I made three thousand dollars this week or five thousand dollars or whatever. I'm not going to tell you that. That thing, that's irrelevant. It's kind of like personal. Nobody should be. You don't have to really go telling the whole world as far as how much money you make. You know, there are people out there that do like to express that. You know, they oh, you hear these people that 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 do all these type of businesses and services they offer you. Uh, how much money you can make a month? This, that, and the other thing. I don't think it's. You know, I think it's irrelevant. I'm a little different on my channel. I do things a little different. Some people say, well, maybe that's why you have a big following. Maybe if you were a little more open instead of being reclusive, you'd have probably more of a bigger following. But why am I going to, do I have to really, to keep people interested in my YouTube channel, do I have to open my, my financial books to you guys? <laughs> really, I mean, would you want to open your financial books to the whole world to see? I mean, think about it. You know, if people feel that way about it, then... When you do your 1040, your IRS forms, plast that up on in the internet. Let the whole world see it. I, I just don't think it's. I think it's irrelevant. I don't. Um, I, I disagree with it. I don't. I'm not going to do that. You know, some people will do that. They'll go in there, and I know they do it on eBay. I guess like that. They probably think, yeah, hey, it's eBay. I don't. You know, I feel. But I don't think it's necessary. You know, to sit there and say, well, look, I made this month. I made last month. I made five thousand dollars. This month, I made two thousand dollars. This month has been so bad, I made $500. What's the big deal? Why does the whole world have to know that? Um, me personally, if I'm doing good, I'll say, well, I had a good week. You know, I did all right. I did five sales, 10 sales, 20 sales. You know, I don't have to sit there and tell you what I bought. And then, then people like to tell you what they built, bought the item for and what they sold it for. You know, People like to hear that. I understand that. But I'm a little different that way. That's all. I mean, I won't... I, I mean, I, I, there's certain times... There are times, I will say this though, in my other videos, there are times I have stated or done things of that nature where I said, this is what I paid for the item and this is what it sold for. Very few times I've done that. Few, and I mean few. But, you know, I haven't thrifted in a long time. That's why you don't see, for those who follow me, you don't see any more um, sneak peek videos. I'll do demo videos. Uh, the video I just did before is a video showcase of what I want to do. I'm trying to pair stuff up to get rid of it. Uh, I do things like that, but for the most part, I don't do intro videos, you know, sneak peek videos. And I haven't done them in a while because I, I, I haven't been going thrifting. You know, I'm, I'm climbing up. I'm buying, I'm, you know, I'm holding on to my money with a, with a little I have left. You know, I mean, I can't sit there and spend money on, um, you know, going thrifting if nothing's selling. Why am I going to keep buying more inventory? When my inventory is building up, that's why I'm trying to get rid of this stuff. I don't want to keep adding to it. I want to get rid of it. And that's what happens. People keep buying and buying and buying. The stuff don't sell. It sits around. I know people that done that there. I was reading some of the blogs. Some people bought stuff from Goodwill and other thrift stores. They can't sell it. One guy was saying, I have, I'm, re I'm donating it back to the Goodwill or to the thrift stores. So you buy all this inventory. You can't sell it. 
It sits around for days. But I heard one guy said he had one there that sits around for over a year. I said, oh, a year? This was sold for six months. This I had this for six months. So, you know, I had this up on there for six months already. Year, six months, three months. I want to move this stuff in and out. I want to go. I want it to go in and out. When I get it, I like to take pictures of it, list it, and get it out of here. I don't want to look at it for a whole year or six months. I want it out of here. You know? But uh, that's what happens, folks. You end up buying all this stuff. It doesn't sell. It sits in your storage area, wherever you got a storage facility. And uh, you're paying money on it, on a, on a storage facility. And it's not going anywhere unless you have a basement or whatever. Or you keep a place in light where, it's, you know, where it's not going to be more mildew. Of course, you don't want that. But a place where it's going to be you know, a dry place where you can store your stuff. And hopefully uh, you get rid of it. But I'm not going to go source right now. I'm not sourcing until I get rid of all that stuff I have. Once I get rid of it, then I'll go out and buy more stuff. People say, yeah, but deal, you may be passing deals up. What can I tell you? But, you know, it's all a hit and miss anyway. And right now, the way it's going with the eBay sales, it's it's not going. That's the thing. So it's really something to think about, folks. Really. I mean, think about it for yourself. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. You tell me I'm wrong. But everybody does their own business thing, their own their own business dealings their own way. You know, you got to run your business the way you see fit where it's, where it's beneficial to you. Me right now, I'm not going to get involved in buying any more stuff. I'm not going to go out and source for stuff right now. That's not going to happen. Because if there's no money coming in, why am I going to keep pouring money into it? Can't make sales, right? So anyway, again, let's close and call it. <laughs> Thanks again, guys, for stopping by. Until next time, bye-bye now.